You know, at the beginning of this week, we had to talk about the story from overseas where nine journalists were killed in Afghanistan. The Islamic State took responsibility for the Monday attacks in Kabul, which killed a total of 25 people. The United Nations Secretary General's office said terrorists are deliberately targeting journalists and that they aren't just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, our guest has lived the story firsthand. Carmen Gentile was hit in the face by a grenade in eastern Afghanistan back in 2010. And he only survived because the rocket-fired grenade did not explode. But it did cost him his eye and uh, numerous facial and mental injuries. It also led him to write a book called Blindsided by the Taliban. And Carmen Gentile joins us now. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. How Thank are you? you for having me. I appreciate it. So tell us about what, what happened, first of all, what you were doing over there and, uh, and the incident itself. Well, I was embedded with U.S. forces uh, in, along the... Uh, Afghan-Pakistan border back in 2010, and we were going on a, uh, a foot patrol through a very small village there. And um, in addition to my print work, I also shoot videos, so I was talking to these men on the side of the road uh, and had my camera trained on them, and then I saw their eyes grow really wide. And I heard a, a whooshing sound from behind me, and I turned around, and there was a man just down the road who had fired an RPG, uh, and the, the ordinance came right toward me and just happened to smack me in the side of the head and uh, immediately blinded me in this eye and um, shattered all these bones in my face, but it didn't detonate, which is uh, very fortunate because I wouldn't be here, obviously. Sure. Um, but subsequently, I was then removed in, uh, from the area with a uh, rescue helicopter and then taken to a military base for additional treatment. And, and in the book, you go into great detail about that process, the mm -hmm. treatment, uh, and. And what you were thinking at the time, as you were uh, obviously under, under the influence of a lot of the medication at the time, still able to kind of recall what was going on there. Sure. Um, but you also open up about just not just the physical scars that you maintained, mm -hmm. but also the emotional scars, the psychological scars uh, uh, that went along with this. Uh, how are you coping now? It's been eight years. Sure. How are you now? Uh, much better. I have had an opportunity to uh, process a lot of this, and the, writing the book did help to some degree. But also, it's time. You know, the old cliche that time does heal all wounds. I don't know if it heals them completely, but enough that you can move on with the rest of your life. And I have. I have a wife and I have a daughter. I continue to report. I've still done work in Afghanistan. I most recently was in Iraq last week. Um, Life goes on. Yeah, it's amazing how that happens because you lost a relationship at the time mm -hmm. that you lost your eye, uh, and uh, and now you've certainly come back full circle nicely with the wife, the family. Uh, but it was also the work that got you back into it as well. At what point did you decide I need to get back out there, even though this is the place where I almost lost my life? That this place being the battlefield. I decided that I was going to go back uh, shortly thereafter. I just knew that it was one of those things that. Um, I couldn't let be a defining moment in my life. And um, it's something that I, I felt like I was pretty good at doing and I wanted to continue doing. And I didn't feel as though I had really a role in journalism outside of that uh, that, I, that would really make me happy. So uh, it wasn't shortly thereafter that I'd said, I'm going back. Two things real quick, Carmen. One, uh, a lot of people might say, why does a journalist even want to be in the middle of a war zone? For you as a journalist, what responsibility did you feel? What drew you out to that dangerous environment? There are, it's important for people to know what's happening there. Um, there's not always as much interest and uh, media attention on these stories that, that I feel are very vital to people to know. We have a, a very small segment of the U.S. population that actually fights. We have what's a, what I consider a warrior class, and the vast majority of Americans don't know what it's like to, to step foot on a battlefield and to serve their country, and I think it's important that they know that there are people that are doing this. Millions of Americans have done this and have done it time and time again over numerous deployments. And people should recognize that fact. Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, this week we saw the case in Afghanistan where mm. a number of uh, journalists not just were killed in a blast, but were literally drawn uh, to a place where that blast would be detonated. What were your thoughts when you heard that? And what are your thoughts on the top journalists? Well, anytime that uh, a civilian population is uh, is targeted that's despicable obviously but to then use a secondary blast once people have are drawn to the to the scene and in this case it's journalists in Afghanistan that's that's monstrous um, the the journalists that I know in Afghanistan the locals are some of the bravest most hard-working dedicated people I've ever met and they take the risks that um, pale my, what I've gone through in, or in comparison. 
um, not only are they risking their lives, but they're risking the lives of their family and their friends mm -hmm. by continuing to do this work because of the way they're targeted. Well, Carmen, we wish you the best. Uh, the, everything is detailed in the book. It is called Blindsided by the Taliban. It is uh, available now. Carmen, I wish you the best. I know you're heading back overseas to get mm -hmm. back to your job uh, and continue to cover those uh, the warriors that we have here in our U.S. military. So thanks very much for, Thank you for, having uh, me. for your it. profiling of our service members and for the work you continue to do. We'll check in with Tucker right now with the forecast. Morning, Tucker. All right.